Hello, my name's Rachel and I'm an RSC teacher at Step 2 Young People's Health. This video is about sex and pleasure. These are the lessons I like teaching the most because it all gets a little bit giggly and a little bit silly. Okay, so just to clarify, for the purpose of this video, when I say sex, I'm talking about any of these things. So penis and vagina intercourse, penis and anus intercourse, also known as anal sex, any kind of sexual touching, so touching of people's genitals, or oral sex. Sex should absolutely be fun, okay? You should be enjoying yourself. If you're not, then you need to look at the reasons for that, okay? But this is where everybody gets a little bit giggly and silly in lessons, because yes, you should be enjoying yourself when you're having sex. When it's not fun, there's certain things you can do. You should check in with your partner. Is consent still there? Do they still want to do that? Do they want you to stop? Do they want you to try something different? It might be a case of your thinking, I'm not enjoying this, I'm just not there yet. And it could be that it's, you know, you're not definite that that's the person that you want to do that with. In which case, you need to tell them that, you need to communicate that very clearly and sex needs to stop. It could be that there's a power imbalance. So by that, that can mean lots of different things. It could be it's somebody that's over the legal age with somebody under the legal age. It could be that there's abuse within a relationship. It could be that you are being pressured into something that you don't necessarily want to do. There's lots of reasons there could be a power imbalance and it's about looking at unhealthy relationships. Is that really the best relationship for you? Could be that you want to try an alternative activity. If that's not working for you, it's perfectly acceptable to say to somebody, I'm not enjoying this. I think I'd rather try something else because otherwise, how are you ever going to know? You need to be able to communicate as a couple so that you can enjoy things together and you can try new things together. And it's absolutely fine to experiment as long as everybody's OK with that and everybody feels safe. For some people, sex isn't fun because they're struggling with their fertility and it might not be that it's fun anymore. It could be that they're having to have sex out of necessity. In some cases, if you're struggling to get pregnant, the doctor will tell you that you need to have an awful lot more sex to increase your chances of getting pregnant. And it kind of becomes a bit of a routine where you have to have sex and you're not necessarily having sex because you want to. You're having sex because you know you have to because you need to get pregnant so for some people it can just get a little bit monotonous difficult not quite as exciting as it was but at the end of the day they're still doing it for the right reasons they're doing it because they love each other and they want to have a child together so <clears throat> there are lots of things you can do to make sex more fun but they all have to start with a conversation you have to be able to communicate with each other. Why isn't it fun? Is it that you want to try something new? It could be that you've been in a relationship an awful long time and the spark's just gone a little bit. Could be talking to a therapist might be quite helpful. You might want to talk about things and share your fantasies with each other. And have you ever thought of that? Oh, well, I never thought of that. Could we ever go? It might be that you need to make some changes. So using a water-based lube, very important that it's water-based. If you use an oil-based lube with a condom, it will damage the condom. It could be that you switch it up a bit and try some different positions. You might introduce clean sex toys. They need to be cleaned both before and after. Or you might want to introduce some role play. You might access some pornography together. Or you might try and have sex in different safe locations. So I'm not talking about down the pub, in the toilets, in somebody's garden, anywhere where you might get caught and it might be uncomfortable or where you're actually breaking the law. But you might want to try it in some different locations. If you're an adult and you've got the ability to, you might want to get a hotel room for the night. There's lots of things that you can do as well. You could pretend that it's your first date, see if that reignites anything, you know, pretend that you literally don't know each other. Some people like to dress up in different outfits. 
some people like to masturbate together rather than having sex. And for a lot of people, actually, slowing it right down and not rushing into sex, not sort of whipping your clothes off straight away, actually, that can be really sensual for people and that can really, really help. So there are lots of changes that can be made to make sex more fun. OK, it's not that, well, it's stopped being exciting. So that's it. Relationship over. We need to dump each other. It just it means that your tastes might, may have changed a little bit. As you get older, as you progress through life, you do change. And it could be that you just need to try something different. But with the consent of your partner. This is something that I hear quite a lot when I'm teaching lessons about sexual violence. It's not rape if they enjoy it. And I find it extremely offensive. Rape is not about sex. Rape's about power. It's about having control over somebody. It is not about sexual urges. It's not about sexual fantasies. And it is not about sexual enjoyment. A person who's being raped is having their power taken away from them. They're not being respected. They're not being treated as human beings. Nobody's going to enjoy that. Nobody asks for that to happen to them. Nobody wants to be raped. Using that statement dehumanises people. You can see there I've taken um, a picture from Human Rights Watch. The central element of rape is power. Soldiers use rape as a weapon to punish, intimidate, coerce, humiliate and degrade. Now, it's talking about soldiers specifically because quite commonly in um, some countries where there is a war, there will be a spike in rape cases and soldiers are often I say often soldiers in some countries are told that they should rape as many people as possible to destabilize that country to dehumanize the people it happened a lot in a country called rwanda in africa in the early 90s where there was an enormous aids crisis and there'd been genocide and there'd been civil war and soldiers were going around raping as many people as possible and um, spreading aids to create further long-term problems not just from the destabilization that war causes but to cause further problems from these people for these people that were now seriously seriously ill as a result so soldiers have been known in the past to deliberately rape people as a weapon they are using rape as a weapon so there is no enjoying it like I said, it's not about sex. It's all about power. So you've got some charities here that have lots of support and information. So we're in the middle there, step two, young people's health. We're a sexual health and mental health charity. And you can see we've got loads of different social media handles. We are attempting to make our way onto some others at the minute as well. You are very welcome to drop us a message or to give us a follow and see what information we come out with. A lot of the others provide information about sex, sexual relationships, uh, consent for sex, how to spice your sex life up a little bit. And they can have lots of interesting articles and debates and things. Um, so you've got Men's Health, the magazine, Pride, Healthline, BU Project. Durex are actually really good for having information on their website. They aren't just the people that make the condoms. You've got Advocate, you've got the Men's Health Forum and Cosmopolitan. The Mix has a massive amount of information on their website about pretty much everything you could think of that a young person might need to know. Brooke is a charity that supports with uh, sexual health. They're based down in London, I believe, but they have a huge website with loads of information on and loads of teaching resources on as well. So actually, they're quite good for you too. There's loads of places that you can get help and support. You can also, of course, access any of the counselling services, the private counselling services, if you feel that you and your partner need support like that somewhere along the line.